Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Wednesday Worship. I'm here with my friend Annie, uh, who just spoke on Sunday in regards to the Holy Spirit. I got to uh, work on the fingering of a guitar, which is like, by the time we did two, two rehearsals and the, the actual service, like my fingers are numb uh, from playing that thing. It's not something I do regularly, but it was a fun little thing to do. Uh, I was a little uh, anxious about doing so. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, like, you've had a little bit of ability doing something, but uh, the idea of doing it in front of a large group of people, like, it just turns it up a notch. So, so thankful that Danny could uh, pitch it for me on Sunday in regards to, to bringing the message. So, Holy Spirit, uh, it's kind of a hard topic in that, like, it goes everywhere. Uh, you've got the Pentecostals who go, you know what, if you're not speaking in tongues, if you're not raising dead people, then you obviously don't have Jesus. And then you've got uh, many of the uh, mainline denominations that are like, Holy Spirit who? <laughs> and, uh, and we have to try to figure out like where, where the truth actually comes in on. So speak to that a little bit more. So you mentioned Sunday like being raised in a Catholic church and then uh, kind of just trying to figure out where, where you landed at. So uh, the, where I was raised was it was more of a concept. Um, I never really learned about like radical life change. And I think a lot of Christians, we kind of forget he's there because we see a lot of, you know, God the Father and a lot of the stories about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit doesn't show up that many times in Scripture actively doing something, and that's because he's active in our lives today. So right now, we're supposed to be living the story of the Holy Spirit. Right. 
I know we've got a, a group of people taking us through Genesis, and you're one of those people. And uh, just starting in the creation story, which Kyla just hit for us on uh, Monday, this idea that the Spirit was hovering over the surface of the deep. It's active and alive in creation, but also in uh, the breath of man. You see that God breathed into him life. And so we can say that that breath, that pneuma, is inside of us. So it is working uh, all around us. So how do we, how do we like tap into that? How do we get the Holy Spirit? I would say ask, ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, give you guidance, and to uh, guide your steps. And um, that's actually not very hard to do. It's just not something we think about a whole lot. Right. Yeah, I, I think back to uh, Acts chapter 2, and you, you mentioned that one. You know, if you're baptized, uh, then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's a, a place in Scripture that it's promised. Uh, but we see elsewhere in the book of Acts that they actually have the gifts of the Spirit, and they haven't been baptized. Mm -hmm. And so you see that there, there's not necessarily a direct parallel, but there's only one time where it's, it's kind of promised. But I think that in, in the message that I'm preparing for this coming Sunday, the idea of obedience, like staying connected with God, uh, staying in tune with and step with the Spirit is kind of an important piece. Uh, how have you seen that take place in your life? Like just staying in step with God and, and you're able to see and experience the, the Spirit more, more fully? I would have to say it's in those times where I'm actually obedient. Um, it's, it's really easy to... Uh, get off course and it's it, for me a lot of my my spiritual uh, life or whatever because um, I was raised in the church you know five six days a week for many years and then uh, right after I kind of grew out of junior high and started uh experiencing more of the quote uh, protestant world i think is what we call this i'm not really sure, sure. evangelical um, christian church uh my rebellion phase was in many ways kind of going against what my family wanted as far as you know a good catholic boy i see our family's catholic so you know it's okay to hang out with these people every once in a while but don't take it too seriously right so that was kind of more of my rebellious phase in a way so it wasn't until my actual rebellious phase hit in my mid-20s that I realized that just simply asking God to guide your steps can set off a chain of events that completely changes your life and completely changes the course of your life. It's part of the reason why I'm in Columbus today. Um, it wasn't because things were good at the time. But when I finally stepped back and said, God, do something here because uh, I've been ignoring you for the last four years, what, what are you going to do? And he charted that original path that I had and located me here and things completely just flipped 180. And it was as simple as just sitting back and surrendering to, to as well. For sure. Yeah, and I came from a, a different background. Well, not growing up in a church home, but being loosely connected with uh, a Pentecostal church uh, where speaking in tongues was kind of a somewhat regular occurrence. And uh, admittedly, like, I was always just kind of wigged out by that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not understanding it. Uh, even today, like, I, I'd say, like, I don't have a firm understanding of speaking in tongues. I see it in Scripture. I know it happened at Pentecost. I believe it still happens today. I've asked for that gift, never experienced that gift, but we have lots of other gifts of the Spirit. And one of the gifts that I believe that I have is being able to uh, share God's Word with other people, being able to uh, unpack it and explain it in a way that people can understand it. And I know that in 1 Corinthians it talks about desiring those gifts for the benefit of the body. You know, desire those greater gifts. Where would you say that you come in on the spiritual gifts side of things? Um, I would say kind of a combination of uh, administrative type of things and teaching. Um, I'm a, in, in my professional life, I've always been a, uh, a trainer. Even when I haven't been good at the actual job, uh, for some reason I get pulled aside and told to train people. And I have a pretty good record of trainees doing well after that. Um, 
And then as far as administrative stuff goes, I enjoy paperwork. It's a weird thing. A lot of people don't. A lot of people find that very boring and monotonous, and it might be, but um, I get a sense of, you know, I, I, it's relaxing for me, it's peaceful for me, and I think if I were doing it on a real professional level, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and I would describe it exactly how you just did. Boring, monotonous, <laughs> like I hate paperwork, I hate busy work, I always want something new, something fresh. I want to engage with people or work on something that's more in, in my wheelhouse as far as creativity. And those things breathe life into me. And that's where I think that we see the, the spiritual gifts like coming together. Uh, that first Corinthians, you know, there's uh, many gifts, but only one spirit. And the head of, of this body is Christ. We all come together. Uh, but there's also, and you talked about it on Sunday, in Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the spirit. So the spiritual gifts, like they can be different for each person, but the the spiritual fruit like that should be something that every believer is working on you want to unpack maybe some of those and how you've seen those change and grow in your life so your know, peace patience kindness goodness self-control uh, I think there are some people who are are naturally patient people who aren't Christian uh, I know some very Christ like atheists who are very loving um, but I also know some Christians who, who aren't so patient, but that patience comes when you ask God for it, and sometimes it shows up in ways that you don't normally expect. Um, what is it? Self-control is kind of the same thing. Like, you could be completely out of control of your life. You ask the Holy Spirit to work on you, and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're controlling yourself in situations where before you wouldn't. And why you do that, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, you can try and explain away psychologically, but you just can't. Mm -hmm. And I'd say those attitudes in my life have, uh, have shown up in weird ways. There's certain situations that would happen where uh, I would potentially get very bitter, very angry. And I'm able to, you know, kind of swipe off the shoulder a little bit quicker. Right. And, you know, why is that? Well... You know, I could say it's, you know, serotonin and all that. There's some truth to that. Um, I do believe in psychology and science, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, you can't explain it away other than God. Right. And I've definitely seen that the more that I stay in step with the Spirit, the more that I see those spiritual gifts evident in my life, the, the fruit is evident in my life. And the opposite is, is absolutely true as well. The more that I kind of step away from, from God, step away from obedience, step away from prayer, step away from His Word, like the less I see uh, those fruits growing in my life or the evidence of that Spirit. And so um, if you're watching and uh, just kind of wanting to know a little bit more about the Holy Spirit, about uh, what Francis Chan uh, coins as the forgotten God, which I would say many times is absolutely true, uh, it gets lost in the shuffle. We have God the Creator and Jesus the Savior, and then who's this Holy Spirit guy? And what do you mean he like he lives inside of me? That's weird. Uh, but if you want to know more about like uh, spiritual gifts and what ones you have, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to the church, uh, to one of the pastors. We will guide you in that process of trying to determine what your spiritual gifts are. But uh, I, I really do believe that one of the easiest, easiest assessments is uh, examining what in your life brings you joy and happiness that aligns with God's Word and that benefits and glorifies God's kingdom by serving His people. If you can glorify God in the way that He created you and serve His people, I think you have found something in your life that you should be doing a lot more of. And you really need to be able to use it for His kingdom, uh, whatever that might be. And uh, so check that out. Also be uh, looking at Galatians chapter 5. Look at those uh, the characteristics of, of the Spirit of God and see if that isn't something that maybe uh, isn't already growing inside of you or something that maybe you need to be working on, that, you know, submitting to God's Word, His will, His way, and allowing the fruit to grow uh, in tremendous ways. Well, as we wrap up our time here on Wednesday Worship, one of the reasons we're here at West Park Elementary, this is where Danny and uh, his family, like they, they plug the kids in over here. Uh, it's a good school in the Columbus Public School District, uh, but it's also kind of a reminder that six years ago, Connection Christian Church got its start in an elementary school right here in Columbus, Lost Creek. And a couple weeks ago, 
uh, Pastor Josh and I were hanging out up there uh, recording the, the message time. We had uh, Megan and Amber sharing a little bit of their story. You can go back and check that out if you want to. Uh, but we always gave gifts uh, to those schools, uh, to the teachers that were there uh, as a way of appreciating them hosting us, but also as a way of loving on them in the name of Christ. And so this year we're going to be doing something similar, only we're taking it like uh, several notches ahead and we're, uh, we're getting in uh, pop and juice and water, uh, candy bars and other snack items, and we're going to bless the entire Columbus Public School District. Uh, it's a big undertaking, over 600 people working for the Columbus Public School 627, District. 627, I believe. 627, that's a good memory. Uh, so that is an amazing thing, and if you buy each one of them a pop and a candy bar, you can imagine where that comes to. So we need your help. So if you consider Connection your home, or you want to be a part of what God is doing here in the Columbus area and blessing uh, these schools and the, the teachers and leaders that we have there, uh, we would invite you to, to drop off those products at my house, 2975 Linden Drive here in Columbus, or bring them Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, we'd love to have you. Come join us at the club, 10 a.m. Sunday, and bring one of those items. Bring a case of pop, a case of water, uh, maybe some of those snacks, and help us bless the school district as they get started with uh, kind of a crazy school year ahead of us. So why don't we pray it up for them. And, uh, and guys, thanks again for joining us on Wednesday Worship. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for um, the power of your Holy Spirit alive and well within us uh, to equip us, empower us, embolden us to do things that we never thought possible, to help us to mature into the image of Christ. Uh, Father, we are not where we want to be, but uh, we, we give you praise that we're not where we were. Uh, so continue to uh, work within us. And, uh, and Father, help us through the, the power of your Spirit uh, to, to be able to go out and share your word, to be able to be the light and the salt that this community desperately needs, that we can be able to connect this area to Jesus Christ. And, uh, and Father, as we get ready for uh, another season of school uh, with all of the crazy restrictions and uh, everything, the complications of COVID, the, the stress levels of, of parents, of teachers, of kids, uh, the anxiety that must be present in uh, our government leaders and school administrators, Father, we pray that, that your peace would be upon them as they, they seek your will. Uh, Father, would you bless them in this endeavor? Uh, would you help them to uh, be able to teach the, the students, to teach them well? Be with the students, uh, give them uh, open ears amidst everything going on, that they might be able to settle in and be able to learn and to grow. Uh, would you help them all to be able to share and, uh, and glorify your love as they come together? We have so many uh, great believers that are in the school district. Father, would you just raise them up to do great and powerful things, that they would be uh, uh, able to to bring some healing into the school district and father for those who don't know Christ that are existing here uh, father may this be an opportunity where they experience just a little bit of Jesus and father may it make a lifelong impact and we ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ amen okay. hey guys have a great week see ya